Hello and welcome to Ben's Addiction. Today we have a new issue. Well, this issue, I knew it from the day one when I bought this Mercedes W124 with M11 engine, M111 engine. It's a four cylinder 2.2 220E class. So let's have a look. If you have this issue over here like this, that you have a milkshake inside the reservoir or the coolant tank, that doesn't necessarily mean that your head gasket is gone. Well, there is a possibility, but let's consider the other options or other issues as well before jumping into HG or head gasket issue for this engine. Well, first of all, let me tell you, this engine runs perfectly with no issue, no signs of uh, heating up, no signs of uh, malfunctioning or anything like that. The oil is super clear and not milky at all. It looks perfect, as you can see over here. Also, when you open the cap, the oil cap over here, you will see that it's completely brown and nothing odd is going in there at all. The only thing is getting through the cooling system is probably oil, but what type of oil? What about the uh, transmission fluid? Maybe the transmission fluid is leaking into the radiator and going into that uh, reservoir. So let's check that out as well. So let's pull this dipstick out and have a look at it to see what is going on here. So over here you see that everything is pretty normal. The uh, fluid is very pink and I cannot spot any uh, issue over here whatsoever. So definitely the coolant is not finding its way to the transmission and also it's not finding its way to the engine. So if you have a close look to the front of this uh, radiator, you will see that there is this U-shaped uh, cooler, which is a hydraulic steering a cooling system that does not lead to any coolant. So it's only a U-shaped uh, pipe in theory. At the same time, the transmission cooler exists and that uh, goes inside the radiator over here. So this is one case that you need to check before jumping into the head gasket issue. In saying so, these engines are prone to uh, find a passage to the uh, cooling system, uh, especially in the rear area over here. So also these head bolts are stretched type of head bolts. And after too many cycles of warming up and cooling down, they might stretch to some extent. And that leads to the head gasket passages leaking into the cooling system passages without causing any other issues like lower compression or cooling system finding its way to the combustion chamber. To explain this more, I'm going to uh, take off that cover over there and check the chamber and look for coolant and do a compression test on this engine to make sure everything is okay. So the first thing I want to check is the color of the milkshake. So it's, it's good to try it on a piece of white paper and we don't have much uh, milkshake over here. And from the day one when I bought the car, it has almost been the same amount. So over here, as you can see, uh, it's not black and it's not pink either. I'm pretty sure this is not transmission fluid. Trans transmission fluid is more into red, but this is not black either. Also, the other issue is, uh, so this car, uh, there was a problem with blowing some of the engine uh, coolant hoses uh, previously, and that was reported to me by the previous owner. And they also changed the radiator. So the radiator is a brand new one. It might be the remaining oil from uh, that time when the heat exchanger was faulty and leaky. So that might be another uh, possibility. But let's go ahead, take out that uh, air vent over there and check the compression and check inside the combustion chamber for something abnormal. So let's take two clamps off. 
So we can remove this air vent over here. Let's disconnect two sensors. This one is a MAF and the other one is a, a temperature, air temperature uh, sensor, I believe. And then we need to slide this to the left side of the engine because you need to slide it toward the left because there are two uh, metal clips over here. As you can see over here that goes inside these two plastic clips. We have three Allen uh, screws over here to remove Allen bolts. Uh, okay, I'm pulling these uh, spark plug wires, uh, the boots out, and at the same time putting uh, labels on them. This is number one. So it's a good idea to label them, not to mix them up. I can see some rust spots or water uh, marks on these uh, spark plug boots. Uh, I don't know, maybe they washed this engine at some time. I did the same thing. I have labeled all these, so I won't have any issue now. The throttle body looks clean. That's not bad. Let's take out the spark plugs and see what we can see inside because that can tell us a lot of stories. And as you can see over here, I can see some, uh, it's probably water in there. That water inside can cause all sorts of issue. Let's clean that mess up and don't let it go inside the chamber before uh, taking off the spark plug. So I'm going to use pressurized air to clean that water, which is sitting in there. Okay, I'm using pressurized air to remove dust, debris, and all the water. But I'm using a rag as well, so I don't want to mess everywhere. All the water is out, and there is no issue with dust and debris. So let's take the spark plugs out. Magnet to remove it. This is number four. Doesn't look bad at all. I, it doesn't look the best. The gap is big. This one uh, is the one that had a lot of water on top of it. It looks like it it's running a bit lean as well. Almost looks identical to others. It's It seems like it's running a bit lean. And by running lean, I mean there might be a vacuum leak or something in the system. So yeah, this is uh, like the other ones, no different at all. They're all worn and they seem to be running lean like a vacuum leak. And they had a type of deposit on the electrode as well. It's not running cleanly. Yeah, that's how it looks like. The car has been sitting for a while. It's about a week without any uh, starting the engine. Let's go ahead and check inside the combustion chambers for anything abnormal, any fluid, coolant, oil, or any damage inside the engine. So I'm looking inside the cylinder number one and I can't find anything uh, extraordinary, anything abnormal over here. Cylinder number two and it seems very normal as well. There is no coolant or oil on top of the cylinder at all. Cylinder number three and the same situation. There is no uh, fluid on top of the piston and it seems to be all good. This is number four, and as well, it looks to be in a good shape. Now that we checked on top of the pistons and there is nothing wrong inside the chambers, I have put this screwdriver so I keep the throttle body open for a compression test. So let's go ahead and do a compression test on all four cylinders and compare to see if there is any leak or not. Before doing a compression test, we need to remove the 
relay for the fuel pump and it's behind this cover over here behind the battery so let's remove the cover and then there's a rusty ECU over here there's another one and then on the right hand side you see that big one is the compressor relay or air conditioning uh, system relay so it should be a green one with a fuse 001542 is the number and when you switch on your ignition you want not to hear any sound from your fuel pump. Number two is 180. Number three is 180. Number four is 185. Okay, number one is 162. Okay, so we try to diagnose and find the reason why we are getting some oil in the coolant. At the end, I think this might be the previous leak from the transmission uh, cooler into the radiator that is uh, getting into the cooling system again, the remaining of the transmission oil. What I know, all of the cylinders have proper amount of compression. So they are all within 10% uh, and more than enough for an engine to run properly. Uh, so that couldn't be an issue. We always need to check the engine oil cooler. The engine oil cooler always can be the culprit of finding oil in the coolant. In this case, M111 engine does not have any separate engine oil cooler. So we should cross that off our list. So the only uh, thing that is left is one, the remaining oil from the old radiator. Now we have the new radiator installed. The remaining oil in the system is coming into the cooling system. That's number one. The second possibility might be the oil cavities around the cylinder head to leak because we have like 60, 70 PSI of uh, oil pressure leaking into the cooling cavities. That can be the second possibility and I cannot think of anything else. So let's install the new spark plugs and run the engine and check how the engine runs now. So one thing for sure is the gap for the new spark plugs is half the size of the gap of the old spark plugs. So the old spark plugs were bad, although not looking terrible in terms of uh, combusting the uh, fuel. And they were all consistent as you can see on the photo. And I will clean up the cooling system again and I will check it again in 50 kilometers. If I get more oil into the cooling system, I will definitely go with the second possibility that is the oil cavities, the high pressure oil leaking from the gasket into the coolant cavities from head gasket. Okay, I have cleaned up the small amount of oil that was there and honestly it was not even like 5 cc of oil but because it was on the top of the coolant it was looking uh, much more. So now I'm going to uh, run the engine, I'm going to check the condition of the oil in the coolant in the next 50 kilometers and will uh, act accordingly after that. The head gasket on a Mercedes four-cylinder engine can be an issue after 200,000 kilometers, but not a big deal. The reason why I'm leaving it for now like this is my oil condition is perfect. The engine is running perfectly and the transmission uh, fluid is very clear. So it's not going to harm anything at all running the engine and using the car until we find out the real source of the issue and it's most likely to be the head gasket if it comes back into the cooling system.
this was the cold start and as you can see the engine started with the first crank and running okay the rpm is a bit lower than what it should be for the startup but that's i think another issue here is how the engine is running it's very cold but i can't see any issue at all it's running smoothly for a four cylinder the exhaust gas sounds very smooth and the flow of the gases very constant and I can't see any problem at all and there is no fluid coming out of the exhaust pipe at all and when the engine is running I cannot see any bubble coming into the coolant at all no pressure in the system whatsoever and here is the last test I'm going to do on this car I'm clogging this overflow hose over here and then I'm putting a glove over here if this glove say a high to me that means we having a compression passing through coolant so let's check this out So no change i think we are very good there is no compression into coolant so there is no reason why we blow any hoses anymore so guys thank you so much for watching liking subscribing have a great day bye let's go